got accepted to NYU. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. G-A-B equals G-B-A or something like that. But that oh, yeah. The, the metric tensor is symmetric. So, so now what you can do is, uh, the reason it's symmetric is that the metric tensor comes into the metric. And so you have that uh, uh, ds squared is equal to g dx alpha uh, dx beta. So, so, that, so, so this is symmetric under the in interchange of alpha and beta. That means that this must be symmetric, because if, if it would have an anti-symmetric part, it would uh, become zero after summation. You understand that? Okay, okay. So, so now we can do the following. Uh, we can d rho uh, g mu nu minus d mu uh, g uh, nu uh, rho minus d nu uh, g rho mu, th that are uh, these uh, three terms. And we know that each of these equations uh, gives me uh, zero. So we can bring this uh, to the other side of the equation, and we have uh, these uh, six uh, terms. And if we write them out, then we get g lambda nu times gamma lambda rho mu minus gamma lambda uh, mu uh, rho plus uh, g uh, mu lambda times gamma lambda rho nu minus gamma lambda uh, nu rho uh, and the last term is minus g lambda rho times gamma lambda uh, mu nu plus gamma lambda uh, nu uh, mu. And now, in in uh, the the Christoffel uh, symbols, we have that uh, gamma lambda alpha beta is gamma lambda uh, beta alpha. Oh, okay. They are symmetric, and we we did not uh, show that. Uh, you can. You, you can show it. Um, you, it, 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 is, it is some work uh, to show. And if it's symmetric, uh, these two actually cancels. And Which one is you, you have only this. So you have to act with the inverse of this of that. And these are the same. So this is 2 gamma lambda and mu nu. And then what you get is that gamma lambda uh, mu nu is equal to minus uh, one half times the inverse of this, that is a g with upper in indices. And you have to, I call the sigma rho times uh, d rho uh, g mu nu. Uh, that's the first one, minus d uh, mu g uh, nu rho. Uh, minus uh, d nu uh, g uh, rho mu. Okay. And this is actually an important expression. For, for every calculation in general relativity, you have to calculate those. This condition um, somehow. Uh, We know experiment. Uh, you 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 want so, so so what you really want is th that if you have a scalar product between two factors, so x alpha, uh, say g alpha beta times x uh, beta. So we want that scalar products are preserved by uh, covariant uh, derivatives. So we, we want that. This is a scalar. Um, so that means it's an ordinary uh, derivative. And uh, 
if this is valid, uh, you know that the derivative with respect to this vanishes. And that is uh, one reason uh, to introduce it math mathematically. Um, that th th they enter uh, in the curvature of space time. Are they just important abbreviations for uh, this chunk, or do uh, they you, have you, could, you could say they enter in the covariant uh, derivative. In the definition of uh, derivative, uh, it, it is down there. Uh, they define uh, the derivative. The, this is the derivative that enters in general relativity. So, so what you have is that uh, the covariant uh, derivative that when you uh, g alpha gamma, so these are second uh, derivatives of the metric uh, tensor. They are nonlinear because uh, uh, these, uh, so, so there are, this already contains the second power, here there's another power. So, 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 so this contains uh, squares of the Christoffel symbols and uh, derivatives of Christoffel symbols. So, so it's complicated. So, so the Riemann tensor contains, I think, uh, 24 terms. Uh, okay. And, uh, so it's a real, real complicated equation when you write, would write out all terms. And that is why it, it is non-trivial to actually uh, do the first order expansion. And, and you know, to first order, uh, we, we should recover uh, the, the normal uh, gravity. And... Uh, okay. It's some work. I, I did not... In my class, uh, that that will be the topic of next week. Really? Yeah. But but there there are steps uh, missing uh, to go from. Of course. So so we first have to understand uh, the curvature. So now we understand uh, the derivative, how 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 they work, uh, with uh, these uh, Christoffel symbols. Uh, also important is that uh, when you have a vector, d alpha v beta is a tensor. So th these covariant derivatives are such that when you differentiate a vector, you get a tensor. When you have an uh, ordinary derivative, v beta, this is uh, not a tensor. That's just a regular vector? No, no, not even that. It's just it no, no, it, it has some terms, it, it has not nice transformation properties. Okay. And, and that, that's not a reason to have covariant uh, derivatives, because uh, in this equation, these are all tensors. And, and that is why this is, uh, the, uh, the, and this is a scalar, that is why this is the only possible equation. So these are the tensors uh, we have. The, that is the curvature tensor, the metric tensor, and the energy momentum tensor, which contains information of all, on all matter and energy we have, and momentum. So now we've really started treating the metric tensor as a variable? Uh, that's right. Uh, it, it's, it's really a, a solution of this equation. Given uh, some matter uh, distribution, you can solve this equation for the metric tensor. So the differential, so, so the metric tensor g mu nu is a function of uh, space time. So that's that that is the that is the unknown function, and and this is a differential equation for this unknown function given uh, some matter uh, distribution, which is inside uh, the energy momentum tensor. Is there an exact way to? Uh, find the metric tensor in terms of uh, space-time now? Uh, in some cases, you can solve this equation, okay. where, where it is simple. In the first place, in vacuum, when there's nothing, you can look for solutions. 
And then we know that we have gravitational waves. That, that's the solution of this equation. And we can also look at uh, when it is spherically symmetric, like a black hole. Uh, you can look for black hole solutions. And because they're spherically as uh, symmetry, uh, these equations simplify to, I think, uh, I, I don't remember the exact number, but about six nonlinear differential equations, which you can solve analytically. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? Oh, there, there are steps missing. You're right. Yeah. You're right, uh, because... Um, I'm sure it's a way harder than that to derive Einstein's equation. No, it's actually very, once you understand curvature, it is very easy because that's the only thing what you can write down. But, but, uh, so the step, the steps we didn't discover, we didn't show that uh, in this curvature, it only depends on the vector itself. It could depend on the derivative. There could be, say, a term, uh, I, I, I don't know, say r alpha, uh, beta, gamma, maybe r prime, uh, delta times uh, del uh, gamma, just writing that, uh, so, so del alpha um, x again into the second derivative. But they, they are not there uh, in, to define the curvature. Okay. And, uh, you, you can show that, and we did not show that. Also for the derivatives, you could have more complicated combinations, but derivatives enter uh, not in the game. We, we, the proof is in my notes, okay. but you should read that uh, and, and uh, go through that. What set of lecture notes? In uh, the ones that are on the web page, um, somewhere here. Yes, but. There were multiple very interesting. Uh, one final question. What do we mean when we talk about curvature in graphics? What is like a rigorous definition of curvature? Uh, what we mean by curvature is like sphere. A sphere is curved. Well, uh, if, uh, what, what we mean in, in maybe a simple way is if you draw a triangle of a sphere, mm -hmm. the sum of the angles is not 180 degrees. So that's curvature. Is there a way to quantify curvature? Like, can we say that a certain one surface is more curved than another? Oh yeah, that that is uh, uh, this this tensor. This is the curvature scalar. For a sphere, this is actually a constant all over the sphere. In flat space, this is zero. On a cylinder, it is also zero because yeah. this cylinder is not curved. Do you think it would be feasible to cover that next time? Um, to, 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 we, we can do some examples involving uh, curvature. And in, in, for example, a sphere. And we didn't discuss parallel transport yet. Uh, so we have to. That the natural next step? That, that's one of the, the, the steps to understand geodesics, uh, for example. Okay. So you need parallel transport. So maybe we should cover uh, that next time? Yeah, we, sh we should cover that. Okay. But I, I went to that to see where we are going. Yeah, it's always important to have a step forward. Yeah, so, so, so that's the, the first goal to, to understand, to go to the Einstein equation, and after that, to understand the solutions of the Einstein equation. I may need to learn a little bit more math because I'm not experienced with partial differential equations yet. So. You always need partial differential equations in physics. Yeah.